men who were more promiscuous and slept with more women and at the same time were more jealous of other men being around their their girlfriends they pass on their genetics more it's an inescapable conclusion i'm not saying it's right the best way to understand evolutionary psychology is just to work backwards and work backwards up to where we are now so let's go to a beginning point so for this discussion we could have a beginning point of mammals which is about 178 million years ago a beginning point of hominids which would include homo habilis homo erectus all these other hominids that would be about three million years ago or we could look at the the origin of homo sapiens which is the species we belong to uh, that would be about 200,000 years ago um, the question you have to ask yourself is, so there's probably points during our evolutionary history where survival was very, very tough. No electricity, no running water, uh, no medical care services. You're basically on your own. No one's going to come to save you. And you live in a tribe of about 150 people. During those uh, time periods, you have to realize that in a, there's not even 50,000 humans on the planet at one point. You have to imagine at that time period, uh, oh, there was a plague or if there was a predator or something like that, it could wipe out the entire species. And if you look, there's 14 other species of hominid that have been wiped out, including homo Neanderthalus and Homo habilis and Homo australis, they were all wiped out. So everything that we have with us today was some was a tool in our toolkit that aided us in survival back during that ancestral period. If you can start from understanding that that conclusion I just gave you is totally inescapable, that that must be true, because it must be true, um, then you understand, okay, fear of snakes, fear of heights, fear of spiders, prefer women with symmetrical faces and a certain hip to waist ratio. We prefer men with a shoulder to waist ratio. Women prefer men taller than them. Resource acquisition, all these kind of things, uh, paternity, uncertainty. You realize, okay, these things all came from our ancestors. Like for instance, humans don't eat poop. Uh, the humans that may have existed that ate poop, they all died of dysentery or whatever the and they did not pass on their genes. Men who were not a little bit jealous and somewhat mate guarding of their, their wives, of their mates, ended up raising other people's children. So the men who were more, it, it's really funny because it is part of Sexy Sons hypothesis, men who were more promiscuous and slept with more women, and at the same time were more jealous of other men being around their, their girlfriends, they pass on their genetics more. It's an inescapable conclusion. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but it is an inescapable conclusion. If, if the thing that the proclivity keeps causing that phenotype to, to have more children, then that proclivity is going to get passed on through evolution. And so since like 200,000 years of evolution is enough, to be fair, like monkeys are also afraid of snakes. Like there's a lot of things between other primates and, and other mammals in general. If you put fire in front of a cat, it's going to run away. Like there's certain things that as mammals, we kind of all have in common. We jump at loud noises. We tend to have a fear of heights, et cetera. Um, you know, we can smell foul odors like sulfur and we don't want to be around them. So when you when you come to those realizations, then you start to say, ask the question, okay, which one of all my preferences or proclivities come from evolution and which one of them come from culture? And then you dig even deeper and you come up to this really scary realization, Fabian, which is all of them do. All, every single every single proclivity we have is based in evolution. And then you're like, well, but no culture this and culture that. And you'll see this with movies that try to cr promote a more egalitarian nature. And by the way, I'm not, I'm, I'm very much in favor of that. I'm very much in favor of, you know, I think women should vote and, and I believe in, in civil rights. Like I'm not, I don't have a problem with that. What I'm telling you is that it was not innate in our design for those things. What happened was culture elevated us as a species to where we could accomplish those goals. But the problem is culture then tries to do things like make, you know, for instance, body positivity is a situation and I'm, I'm not shaming body positivity. What I am saying is it's okay to accept someone because they're overweight, but it's not okay to tell me as a man that I need to find them attractive because that defies my evolution. And so that's where, you know, I kind of draw the line with, with certain aspects of that. You know, a lot of what I, what I just said is when, when you come to the realization that you can basically look at every situation with humans through an evolutionary lens and you can usually find the answer. In fact, I really haven't found a situation where I haven't found the answer. Every single question when it comes to evolution, I can find some theory that at least, you know, mostly explains it. There's a few things that are a little confusing, uh, but for the most part, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the most hot. As far as psychology goes, psychology is what's called a soft science, meaning there's a lot of theories. Most of them aren't tested. People could do way more studies, but it's a very fungible very like vague science, except this one area of psychology called evolutionary psychology, where they're consistently looking for hard data, no matter where the data takes them. And often it takes them to very ugly places, which is why it's not a broadly accepted branch of psychology. Mm -hmm. And you also you often see people on YouTube saying evolutionary psychology is bigoted. No, it's just a psychology. It's just a science. The science leads us to where it leads us. I'll give you an example. Um, there's one study by an evolutionary psychologist where he looked at the success of on dating apps based on what your race was. And so, you know, the egalitarian would be like, either don't look this data up or 
everyone should receive the exact same amount of right swipes based on their based on their race. And of course, that wasn't the truth. He published the study and he was absolutely eviscerated for it. He found that Asian men and African American women do the worst on dating apps. And he published the study and he lost his tenure and he 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 ran for the hills after that. So it's one of these things where in evolution, we just kind of try to figure out in evolutionary studies. If there's an ugly truth, which the truth is, guys, sorry, there is no free will and we are hairless murder apes. Um, once you come to these realizations, it's ugly. So evolutionary psychology also does not receive widespread acc acclaim because liberals don't like it liberal, because evolutionary psychology clearly defines gender roles and conservatives don't like it because it's evolution. And a lot of them don't believe in evolution. So right. it, it has no political backing. Uh, the psychology community doesn't like it. Uh, it's very ugly. Uh, it's, it's one of these things that it's just one of these uncouth things you shouldn't be talking about at the dinner table. Right. And it's also completely factual. And then I also think as men, you know, we talked about a burden performance, men do need experience when it comes to dating. Men need to be able to discern, you know, was it, it poison uh, that she's got a big ass and a smile? That girl is poison. Like you, you can't, that, that song is about red flags. Right. Just because she was attractive, therefore I ignore the red flags. Right. Men need experience in order to get past that because the urge for sexual validation in men is so incredibly strong. So women, on the other hand, don't need experience when it comes to dating. What they need instead is like a friend group that can tell them, hey, this guy you're dating is abusive or narcissist or whatever. It is really amazing to me how many problems women have in their dating life that could easily be solved by a male family member or an older male friend or a plutonic male friend or a female friend who's been in a happy, uh, successful relationship just examining their relationship from a third party uh, par party standpoint and giving them better advice. That's, it's incredible to yeah. me how often, it, it, but the problem is whenever I give women proper advice, like, hey, just to let you know, like do whatever you want, but like you do understand this guy is a DJ in Las Vegas. He is going to other women behind your back. I don't care what he tells you. And her response is, no, I'm going to change him. He's going to be my boyfriend. And well, of course she's it, hurt six right. months later because not the, everything I said was true and everything she said was based on her feelings. Right. When you, when you come it. to that realization, like that's one of the issues, issues that happens is had she had a male family member or a male platonic friend that she would listen to about from a third party about her relationships, she would actually be able to be more successful in relationships. So women don't need more experience when it comes to dating. Men do. That Great points there, Michael which you kind of, I don't know how you're doing it. You're, you're, I don't know you guys, you're, you're kind of going right into some of the follow-up questions that I have. Well, you said earlier, women tend to be delusional, right? A lot of times, and they, they, t they obviously they're, they're emotional. So a lot of times they, you may offer them some advice for their benefit. They may take it. Chances are they won't, but yet women are naturally better, uh, more socially calibrated than men, you'd say. Yes. Women are approached, uh, women right now, like a, an average 22 year old woman is approached more, an attractive one, especially is a a approached more in her life than I will ever be in my entire life. Right. She'll be approached more by the time she's 22 than I will be approached by other human beings in my entire life. So women's social calibration is higher. They also just have a natural ability to read facial expressions that are better than men. They also have a better sense of smell like uh, uh, than men. Like there's the th a ton of things that women are just capable of doing. I believe women are better at sussing out social hierarchies than men are. Um, and so from that standpoint, what does that mean? That means if you're a phony, women are going to be able to, to, to seek it out. Now, there's ways around it. Men have evolved adaptations in order to get around some of those defenses that women have, like, well, like love bombing would be a great example of one and just like deceit, deceit, just straight out deceit. Yes, honey, I'll see you when you get back from work and then you just go have an affair. Like that's deceit is another thing that men have an adaptation to do. Women do too, by the way, all humans yeah. have the adaptation to deceive. It's just a situation where like the more you learn about the actual, about the actual psychological hardware, firmware in your brain that comes from evolutionary adaptations and then and you just accept those things and understand that they're true no matter how ugly they are the closer you will be to the truth i want to ask you regarding because you you shared some great insights around men bettering themselves getting in better shape so forth uh let's say for example i've, I've uh, you've spoken about this in past uh, uh, interviews, so forth. So men that are older, you know, 30s, 40s, so forth, and uh, maybe low low energy levels. You talk sometimes about TRT. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about th what that is for someone that doesn't know? Yeah. Uh, you know, and I know, obviously, there's not medical advice yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So the, the only advice I can give you is to go to a TRT doctor and then have your levels checked. What I'm going to tell you are hypotheticals that could be happening to you. In order for you to achieve like certain, regardless of what the world tells you, most women find masculine traits in most men to be attractive, more attractive than feminine traits. I know there's 
oh my God, Machine Gun Kelly and Harry Styles are attractive. I get what you're doing. You're saying here, those men still have super high status, even though they're not super masculine, but having masculine traits and masculine boundaries for the most part, no matter what society tells you is what most women find attractive in men. Okay. They want a man who could fight better than them, is stronger than them, is taller than them, and makes more money than them. If you ask women, do you want a man who's more intelligent than you? Most women will say yes. Do you want a man who makes a lot more money than you? Most women will say yes. Do you want a, want a man who can provide for you so that you can stay at home with the kids and not work? 83% of women surveyed who were in the workforce said yes, that is what they wanted. You know, regardless of how you feel about that, having that, you know, men having the ability to lead or women wanting men like that is what's most important. Reach